What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Power Block for December 5th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. Ed. Oh, I know. I'm, I know. Just stop. I'm mad. I'm, I'm, hey, everybody. I'm just, I'm really mad about that. That's okay. Uh, how's it going, Ed? How's it, how's it going? Oh, it's, it's going good, boss. I, uh, I miss you, and, uh, had a relaxing weekend. Uh, really enjoyed, uh, my time off from work and, uh, had a chill podcast. Uh, but yes, I'm so happy to see you and, and just be back doing talking about Nintendo news. I know. Because I have to tell you my experience at GameStop. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and lead off with that, I guess. Okay. So, uh, get home Friday after work. Like, yes. Xenoblade Chronicles. My collector said, I'm going to go get. Uh, you know, I, I relax a little bit and I finally get there. And uh, I I get there and the guy said, yeah, he was trying to call me. I was just like, well, I was at work, um, so I wasn't able to pick up. He was just like, yeah, we was, we was going to call to let you know that if you wanted your copy, you had to come in real soon because they messed up on the orders. I'm like, how did they mess up on the orders? Well, come to find out, nine people ordered the collector set. And I and that Thursday I had paid all my whole set off. Like everything was paid off. Right. And so he was just he so he ended up giving me the last uh last copy. He's like, Yeah, someone decided not to get it and another person only put five dollars down. So they you know, they didn't expect they didn't, you know, I guess not didn't want it. And so it's a little beat up, not bad. He's just like, I'm sorry, man. That I'm like, do not even worry. It's the contents that's inside, not the box itself. Uh, so yeah, I would have been in the boat with you and not had Xenoblade Chronicles, the collector's edition. Uh, but I did get the Pro Controller and I haven't opened it up. But uh, if everybody would love to see, this is the Xenoblade uh, thing. It's huge. Um, it's literally <laughs> the size of the book. Uh, so uh, let me show you guys. This is the collector's book right here. Uh, uh, you're making me sad uh, right now. <laughs> this is the steel case that it comes in. Nice. Nice. And this is the CD that it comes with. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and everybody, this is the controller. Uh, I want that so bad. Uh, Funny thing is, I have not opened it up. So, uh, let's do that, everybody. Let's open up this bad boy. But uh, the guy was telling me, yeah, the way that it looks inside is more burgundy. It's not the... I guess Splatoon kind of Neapolitan kind of look. Yeah, the Splatoon just... one's like bright pink, and this one's more of like a dark magenta color. Oh, man, I'm so mad. Like, I, dude, the one thing that I'm the most mad about is that like Amazon canceled my order because they said they couldn't fulfill the pre orders. Yeah. And then literally like three days later, it was available on Amazon at a discount. The collector's edition. That sucks. And I'm like, come on, dude. Like, and at that point, I had already. Oh my gosh, I really want that controller really bad. I'm probably gonna have to pay a premium for that, but I don't care. Uh, it's probably go to uh, Best Buy, and Target somehow had the collector's edition. Someone posted that, like they local Target had it. I'm like, when did Target get this? Yeah, it d- depending on wh- how much I get paid tomorrow, and like. I still have Christmas gifts to buy. <laughs> so like, I mean, that's, that's got to take precedent right now, but like, depending on how much I get paid, I might go look for that controller because I really want that controller. <laughs> so I, ugh, I'm just really mad that, you know, Amazon canceled my pre-order and turned around and we're t- selling them like three days later at a discount. Uh, but 
you know, I guess that's just how it works. I ended up getting the regular version of the game anyway, but that's all right. Yeah. <sighs> Sad face. Have you been playing it at all, though? Yeah, I just started it uh, Sunday uh, playing it. Um, I still got a little bit more to do. Um, I am loving this game. I love the the cutscenes. I could just, I really just want to see a movie of. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know how far you got, but um, this is not really spoilers, but when it shows Rex getting stabbed Mm -hmm. and everything, and he goes to like a memory of Elysium, I'm just like, oh, this game looks gorgeous. And I haven't even gotten to the actual game where the Titans and stuff are are at. Um, But when Pyre comes alive and they're fighting the other guy, uh, and just that whole cutscene of action, I was just like, "This is bunkers, and this is so good!" Like it was like action packed, well choreographed for a CGI. Um, and I'm kind of loving Gramps <laughs> in this <Yeah>. game. <laughs> it was funny. The uh, so uh, Rex and Gramps are at a dock, at a port, and they're docking, and. Uh, Rex gets out because he has to turn in some salvaging and send some money to his family. And the guy that stops him, you know, they're having a conversation and he's just like, I'll pay you when I get back. And he's just like, he, the guy's just like, I, I, he does this all the time. And then you get this big wide shot under the guy and Grants and, and Grants is looking at him just like, sorry, but don't carry your wallet. And then <laughs> looks back. <laughs> it is so funny and the guy's just like uh yeah funny. it is it's it's amazing um getting used to the combat um not not that complicated i think once i get more items and more skills uh i'll be able to unlock stuff and start building the skill tree and and you know and grinding and stuff because a lot of people just like i'm like at level 10 and i haven't even did like uh, past the past the first chapter or the second chapter. Nice, yeah, yeah. I I like I played. I played for like a half hour last night. I was like, I'm too tired to play this right now, so I ended up uh-huh. going to bed. But like, I got to the part that you're talking about the wall, like the wallet joke part, and like I really think that that dynamic's going to grow, and I think that you know he's going to be a pretty just kind of dry sense of humor type character but like i was listening to a podcast and they're saying like 15 and 20 hours into this game you are still getting uh you're still getting tutorial menus on how deep the combat goes because it starts out real simple it, i mean yeah a lot of people are saying it does what nintendo does best and it's like starts out real simple and it adds and adds and adds until you have these you know seemingly deep uh, layers of the combat and it's just like oh well I just kind of learned all that and it's it's really nice to see that you know N- Nintendo is kind of rubbing off on Monolith at a point you know so uh, yeah I cannot I'm probably going to play after we're done recording uh, because my wife's at work so I'll have a little time to myself and I'm still trying to play through Assassin's Creed Origins but me too I mean Xenoblade might take precedent just because like like you know you and i discussed uh i'm trying to have more of a focus on nintendo for ngr right now and it's just like man i i need to play these nintendo games there's so many good ones right now and yeah you know later (laughs) break i mean this is all kind of happening right now (laughs) as we're recording and i'm kind of glad we're recording as it's happening uh but the the Mega Man 30th anniversary uh, live stream is going on right now, and they announced a ton of things that are coming to Switch. So I'm so excited. Uh, but yeah, Xenoblade 2. I love Xenoblade 1. I played I played like 75 hours of Xenoblade 1 and didn't even get through probably half the game because the game's so big. And I probably played about 50 hours of X, and then uh, you know I got to the point where like you're starting to use the mechs and like the mechs start you know happening and i really hope that that game does end up coming to switch because they're talking about porting it uh probably like late yeah. next year or something but 
man, I cannot wait to try to because I love the art style. I love the idea of like just getting back to a basic JRPG that, you know, it's just long. Yeah. So uh, I'm really excited, especially because it's on Switch and I can do the same thing I did with Zelda and just kind of grind mm-hmm. away on the couch while we're watching TV or, you know, so. And the uh, I got to say, the voice acting is top notch. It threw me no- off for a minute, though, because like the voice acting, like because it's it's like British, like real, real British. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, whoa. <laughs> Well, it's it's funny. One part, and forgive me for saying this to everybody. One part was just like, "I'll kick his ass," and uh, when you read this, uh, when you read the screen, it says "arse," like A R S E. Like that's weird. It's probably for like people who have subtitles on and they're playing with headphones, and if there's kids in the room. But... Well, it, it yeah, it show it was in subtitles. I'm like, that's weird that it says ours. <laughs> like, uh, uh, but uh, I, 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 I have to post this. But uh, do Mar do March D O U M A R C H. Um, there's a character named Nia, and do March is her blade. Um, and he is so humble his voice acting is so good i i was just like i love you and <laughs> like you you have you're becoming one of my favorite characters i don't know what they're going to do and further on in the story but i i'm like i want to amiibo of you or a plush like or it's just a statue like his just the person whose voice acting him brought him to life yeah and i'm just like this is good. Like this is giving me Dragon Quest Final Fantasy vibes, but separate. Mm-hmm. Meaning that that I just want to play more. And yeah. even though I had to balance that with Assassin's Creed Origins, I'm leaning more into uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two. And I'm sorry, Near Automata. Uh, people wrote uh, read my statement. Uh, I it's out of my Game of the Year nomination, and Xenoblade Chronicles Two replaced it. Yeah, yeah. I I can't wait to dive into this game. And you know, I've already bumped a few games out of my top five just for. Uh, <laughs> for other games and like if i get enough play time with this game before our game right. of the year discussions this is definitely going to be uh in there so and i do have to stop i gotta do i do need to start neo today so i'll probably do that later on and uh what uh the lost legacy for uncharted 2 4 i need to start also um Hellblade, I think I'll be picking up Friday. I think I'm finally going to pick it up so I can give it a try. And uh, I am going to pick up the Sexy Brutal coming up the Friday. Uh, or coming up Thursday. So I hopefully get this Friday. And I kind of want to get the Mummy D Master for Switch. Yeah. They said that was really good. Like Ray Ford did a fantastic job. Man, some people are giving it uh like this is game of the year nomination like for old school indie. And so it's good to hear that Way Forward is getting some love. One of my favorite companies. Like yeah. I feel like Way Forward has kind of replaced Konami and Capcom for me. And I and like I said, I love supporting that. I love supporting them and getting their game. So this the Mummy Did Master, I'm definitely gonna go back and pick up. Yeah. Yeah, I added it to my wish list already because, like, I watched uh, the giant bomb quick look of Mummy D Mastered. It just looks mm. it <laughs> honestly. If you would replace uh, whatever the generic marine guy is that you're playing as in that game, it would totally be a Metro game if you replace that marine with Met- with Samus. So, uh, huh, it's it was really cool to watch, but uh, yeah, man, there's there's a ton of games I need to refocus on and and re kind of reconnect with and uh so i i really plan on diving into xenoblade today and tonight and uh do a few other things so uh yay before uh well let me see i'm i'm trying to figure this out real quick there's a lot happening right now online like as we're recording the Mega Man live streams coming on so we're just gonna hit that real quick that we're gonna jump into our news bits real quick uh 
The Mega Man 30th anniversary live stream is happening as we're recording. And so far, coming to the Nintendo Switch, uh, Mega Man 11, a side-scrolling 2.5D game, fully rendered in 3D character models and and levels, uh, still has that classic 2D uh, 2D Metroid, 2D Mega Man uh, charm. Uh, It's coming to Nintendo Switch as well as the other consoles. Mega Man X Collection coming to Nintendo Switch next summer as well as all the other consoles. And just confirmed, Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 both coming to Nintendo Switch. So, uh, big big news for Mega Man fans. Uh, I guess they were right. Didn't want to miss this. So Exactly. Uh, how do you feel about this, Ed? How do you feel about all this? I know you haven't really got to watch it because you've been at work and we kind of just started recording after you got home, but... <laughs> Um, I'm happy that they're coming to Switch. Um, will I buy it? Probably not. Um, Big Man 11, I will pick up when it comes out. The only reason why is because I own, still own a lot of the Mega Man games. Like, I got the whole collection on my Wii U. I've beaten the games so many times. Now, I probably would get Mega Man X the X collection. I probably would get that because I do have that on GameCube and I do have some of the games on uh, Wii and on Wii U. But uh, I'm, I think I'm probably going to end up buying, getting the X collection so I could play on Switch. As for Mega, as for Legacy 1 and 2, I played those games so many times. So I'm kind of like over them. But this is really good news uh, for everybody who was looking for forward to the game and I know they said that Amiibo are coming to it so I would kind of love to see the Mega Man bosses as Amiibos if they decide to bring it over what if they do like the Mega Man bosses from uh, 1 through 10 and then if you scan them into 11 you get that power (laughs) for that level or whatever oh yeah Oh. Then I'll def- I'll make sure that I'll buy Mega Man One and Two, <laughs> the Legacy <laughs> Collection. Uh, but yeah, uh, as for this news, it's very exciting. I'm super glad that they are doing this. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be happy. Hopefully, they allow custom uh, custom um, button options. Uh, where you could customize them, but I'm just to customize because I need Y to shoot, B to jump. And if I'm playing, if I'm playing it on Switch for the X collection, I need Y to jump, no, Y to shoot, B to jump, and ZR in the back for my dash. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they'll have customizable controls. They, oh, I'm excited because, like, I just want all these games on Switch. Like, I think it's yes. cool that. And I'm pretty sure they're all getting physical copies for Switch too, so that yeah. that'll be. A... And hopefully, and hopefully they're 19.99. Come up with some art books. I w- I'll kind of want a uh, art book collection for them. Yeah, I think I they'll probably have Switch tax. So they'll probably be like 29.99 at least on Switch, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'll buy them anyway. Uh, so that's cool. I'm I'm excited that these games are coming. I I, I always wondered why. Capcom didn't just put the legacy collections on switch, uh, just because, uh, you know, they're kind of easy or to port. I'm assuming, uh, you know, it's yeah. So I'm glad they're coming. Let's see what else is new. we got a bunch of new, uh, games coming to switch in December. So I'm really excited. Super meat boy, uh, the original super meat boy, black, the fall, and ukulele are all coming in december finally i've been holding out on ukulele for switch for a long time it's coming on the 14th and then the other two unspecified dates in december so uh ukulele is an interesting one because so many i got on their website on platonic's website and so many people are like where's the physical copy where's the physical copy where's the physical copy all the other platforms got physical copies uh Mm -hmm. and so far, they have kind of said that they're not doing a physical copy for Switch, which is strange to me uh, because that's the platform where I feel like most people would want a physical copy. Yes. And just the fact that, you know, that team specifically uh, when they were at Rare have so much uh, kind of 
Nintendo love and so much uh, fanfare because of Banjo and, and Conker and Donkey Kong 64 and Donkey Kong Country for Super Nintendo. Like, I don't know. It seems odd that the physical copy is not coming and like maybe there will be a physical copy like next year similar to you know this rumored shovel knight one but like yeah ukulele is the one game that i'm like man physical copy i cannot believe they're not doing it well i think it's because of low sales and the reactions to the playstation 4 and xbox one version yeah but you know the thing is is like so many people didn't buy those versions like anecdotally they're like i'm waiting for the switch version because that game probably feels right at home on switch well well because they've because they still felt that game was somewhat broken and not what people expected so when they released it early um it changed a lot of people's minds now now not saying that they shouldn't bring a switch physical copy because i agree with you i will i will buy a switch copy at day one because it was they were so excited to be bringing this game out to Nintendo on Switch so, uh, or even on Wii U. Like, they were really excited. But because of things happening and as part of the video game industry, things change. I think that negative or that mediocre reception of Ukulele from PlayStation 4 and Xbox One heard it. Now, uh, I, if I was them, I I would I would do physical copies only by order, meaning that if you want a physical copy, you have to order from from them. Mm-hmm. You don't have to bring it to stores and do a retail. Go online to their website and order it for Switch. Yeah. If if I was, I mean, them, that's what that's what I mean. They're not doing it to order, but that's pretty much what Square's doing for Lost Sphere, right? For Switch is like mm-hmm. the physical copies are lim- are limited run, and you can only order them through our store. Like, so, I mean, they could probably do something like that. The only problem is, is like comparing it to Square. Square's a uh, so much bigger company than Platonic that it's like, yeah, does Platonic really have the resources to do that, or are they like? Maybe they felt burned by the physical copies of ukulele for the other platforms, and then maybe they're just not doing it. So I don't know. But and but and the thing, but the thing about it is, people are willing to pay the ten dollars extra if you if you pack in a physical copy for Switch and even add a digital code for soundtrack, even add some art artwork or something. Even if you make this game forty bucks on Switch for for people. They're going to order it. They're going to pay the shipping and handling. So if the game came, if if everything came out to forty five plus some dollars, just in just in total, for it, people will pay because people want that physical copy. People are yearning for physical cartridges on Switch. They love the digital because the reports of digital is making a lot of companies money, but they want this physical product. I will order it. Yeah, you know, uh, and I don't know when Lost Sphere is going to be for order for Square Square Enix, but if I could order from them and get a physical copy, I'm going to order it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would order too. I just it was a little surprising, it, but it's. I mean, it's cool. I'm I'm gonna I'm probably gonna get ukulele anyway. I I would love to just to at least experience it because. You know, with with Odyssey for me at least being kind of a so so game, I'm I really do like Banjo Kazooie a lot, and if this kind mm-hmm. of brings back those kind of feelings, I, you know, I really want to get it. So we'll see, we'll see. But it does come out on the 14th. So yay! yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, outside of the Mega Man anniversary live stream today, there are two other. Uh, kind of major uh what do you call it? press conference i don't want to say press conferences because that's not right announcements an- announcement things coming so uh zelda there's a going to be a zelda broadcast in japan coming on december 12th uh presumably talking about the champions ballad release date and content and kind of story around that so that's cool i can't wait for that and then uh on december 15th namco bandai announcements coming on december 15th 
uh, and will be Nintendo heavy. Uh, so there is a lot of things going around on the internet today, specifically about that Namco thing. Uh, people were talking about a Dark Souls collection, Smash Brothers, and it's just like, man, what? Why? Like, just wait for the for the the announcements and like. It's it's E three for them. People love to speculate. What uh, announcement is gonna be, and that's for anything, even with PlayStation Experience coming this weekend, and uh, with the Video Game Awards coming this weekend, people are, are speculating what's going to be announced. Now, this Nelco Bandai, I would love to see a new Tales game. Like, hopefully, they announce one for Switch. Other than that, I, I just like you, I'm waiting to see what they're going to announce. Like people can, people get hyped, and when they get hyped, they start putting expectations. And when their expectations are not met, they get disappointed and be like, "Well, that was they they could have saved that." In I'm like, no, you already made expectations for what Nelco Bandai should have done, but just wait. I agree with you. Just wait for them to announce it. Stay up. See if it's going to be on YouTube or if they're going to have a link on it on Twitter. Watch it, whether it's in Japanese and with English subtitles, and enjoy what they're going to announce. Be happy for it. Yeah, and it's like I saw a lot of the stuff that it was rumored to be announcing. Like Smash Bros. was one of them. It's like you don't think Nintendo would save that for their own direct since it's their thing. Right. Like that just sounds like really dumb. And it's like the the one thing... I could see happening from I I really wish I could find this article because it it was like a bunch of like ridiculous over the top stuff. First of all, if you're going to if you're going to release Dark Souls on Switch, you're not going to release all three games as a collection. You're going to release them individually. Uh, Right. You know, maybe you don't release. And if you don't release Demon Souls, the one that actually started the Soul series off. Sony owns that, though. Sony owns that owns Demon Souls. Oh, it was Atlas that released it. Yeah, yeah. Sony didn't wasn't gonna bring it over here, and Atlas was ended up publishing it here. Oh, okay. But it's still a Sony. Owned. Maybe that's why they switched it to the Dark Souls series. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's why they did it. Dark Souls was. Uh, they switched it to Dark Souls because Sony owns Demon Souls, the name, so, but they still wanted to like do Dark Souls. So, uh, okay. Man, I really wish I could find this. This this article is nowhere now but basically they were like uh xenoblade a bunch of or a bunch of uh not xenoblade dragon ball uh stuff was coming uh you know a bunch of jrpg stuff it it was just a bunch of ridiculous and i'm like dude there is so much in this crammed in this one announcement that there is no way any of this is true uh the only thing i saw was like uh dragon ball fighters uh, was going to be ported to Switch also. So, I don't know. I just, just wait, man. Just wait. You know? So, I don't know. It's, some of these announcements are kind of crazy, kind of whatever. So, I, I'm excited. I know we're going to have a lot to talk about that week. Uh, we might have to go back to two shows for a lot of this stuff because uh, it's, it's all happening. So, did I not yell at you? Would you uh the last message when we was talking on Facebook and I was just like we need to do like a power block now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did. Like I was hyped when you announced it. I was just like, we need to do a power block right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just <sighs> well we might do two power blocks again this week. I just, man, I wasn't expecting all this news and stuff. Dude, it's, and it's only Monday. Like, like, okay, so we got Nanako Bandai. We got the Game Awards that's coming up. We got uh, Breath of the Wild from Japan. And who else knows that's going to get announced? Like, we have, like, we haven't even. By the time this comes out, who knows what's going to get announced more? Like the Mutamus collection is coming to Switch. 
And that's dropping up, I think, dropping on the 14th also. And it's just like, wait, give us time to breathe with all these game announcements, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay. So, okay, I found it. I found the, I found the article. Yes. So, uh, allegedly, this is from uh, Video Game Culture HQ, and this is uh, according to a leak, quote unquote, and an inside source. Uh, allegedly, these games are the games that are going to be announced: a Dark Souls collection, uh, One Piece, something, 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 something. Well, game based off the popular anime uh soul caliber 6 my hero Ac- my hero Aca- Aca- it's Aca- not academia yeah but it says my hero academy that's why i got confused uh oh. and then xenosaga hd collection and uh some more unannounced projects so yeah uh, I'm looking at Game Informer. January's cover revealed Mega Man 11. I know. I saw it too. I haven't got my last three issues of Game Informer. I'm really upset. <gasps> but Oh, no. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening, but they refused to give me Game Informer, I guess. So I'm going to have to fix that. Man, everything, everything in my video game life is crumbling down in front of me. Ah! No. I'm just kidding. Everything's fine. Uh, I would I wouldn't mind seeing the Xenosaga games come to Switch. Uh, if if they're gonna like re kind of redo them, not redo them, but kind of like remaster mm-hmm. them and kind of make clean them up a little bit and stuff, because those games were really fun. But uh, yeah, those were the rumored games. So we'll see, we'll see. Yes. Uh, the last piece of news we have uh ea internal email suggests a nintendo direct in january finally ea gives us some good news <laughs> yeah oh, after they said they weren't going to make any more games for switch uh the while ea has said that they will take a wait and see approach to switch for now they still have a game coming to switch soon the indie adventure title uh fey which will be released on the nintendo switch along with the other platforms in february now an internal email from EA claims that the game will be showcased with a trailer during the next Nintendo Direct, which will take place in January, according to them. Uh, the mm-hmm. internal e- email uh, was obtained by a Reddit user and shows the launch schedule for Fay, which includes mention of Nintendo Direct in January. Uh, the email also describes EA's plans for going forward with Fay, including work with Nintendo to find an audience for the game. Uh, and future projects. However, it all it all seems good for Faye right now, as the email mentions that we have not seen any spark it cut into the noise. I don't know what that means, but uh, so sure. I mean, we knew a direct was co- probably coming at the end of December, early January, anyway, because we yeah. don't have any details for 2018. And now that Xenoblade Two is out. You know, we got the last major game of 2018 now, and, uh, you know, a few indies that are going to be trickling into December. You know, yes. it, it makes sense for a January Direct. So, uh, because we know, we still know, don't know the name of the Yoshi game. We don't know when Wolfenstein 2 is coming out yet. We don't know uh, a lot about Lost, F- Lost Sphere, and I'm sure they want to lead off with, you know, what's coming in January. So, We'll see. I'm excited for a new Nintendo Direct, though. It's been a while since we got a kind of full-on Direct, you know, that wasn't yes. based around one or two games. So, yeah, I'm excited. Wife's home. I had to wave. Oh. Hi, wife. Um, but that's kind of it for the news. Uh, what do you What do you want What do you want from a Direct in January? <sighs> Uh, still the kid Icarus. I want. Um, I I really want Lost Fear. Uh, more screenshots and I I I want to hear more of the music. 
Square Enix has been killing it with the music in their games and like these indie games. Um, because I am Setsuna is a beautiful soundtrack, and I hope that Lost Sphere continues that and like really starts 2018 off with that. Um, Monster Hunter uh, XX Double Cross, I would love to see that come to Switch and get a physical copy, even if they do a Switch version of a bundle. Like Japan did, I would love to see that uh, come. Uh, Dragon Quest uh, Eleven to get announced. Like that needs to be announced. Um, a port of uh, of um, Tokyo Mirage Session from Atlas. I would love to, that to get a switch. Um, I want to see that sushi game that they announced at three at uh, E3 for 3D uh, for 3DS. I want to see was it 3DS? I think that's I believe yeah. 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 Uh, I would love to see more of that. Uh, Elite B Agents. I want to see part two. I or Rhythm Heaven. Like I want to see some of their off brand and end it with retro. Uh, being announced, uh, maybe maybe Activision gives us the uh, collection of uh, Spiral the Dragon. Uh, I don't think that's going to be all that in January. They're going to save I, stuff like that for E3, I think. I mean, yeah, I mean, because I, I feel like we'll get something like. <laughs> Not the B side games or the off character games, but the ones we we don't talk about, the less talked about, um, that we'll probably get. Um, maybe Platinum might hit at something. Uh, we don't know, so we'll probably get. We'll definitely get some ports. We'll probably get some updates on Wolfenstein Two, um, and then hopefully in February we get our indie direct. And we get updates on some indies and some new indie games coming. Um, that that was that's going to be on uh, every other platform, but haven't been announced for Switch. You know, I would love to see some of that, and maybe we'll get an update on Arms and Splatoon, um, more weapons and more characters and uh, more stages and stuff. So probably probably get some updates and stuff for that too, uh, and probably. This this might be crazy. A Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild complete edition for August. Yeah, I mean I could see that for next year. Next summer, next holiday ish. Mm-hmm. You know. I get I mean I so many games do that now. That's kinda like I feel like that's almost like a no brainer at this point. You know? Yeah. So um, Oh, and uh Fire Emblem. We'll probably get a hint at the story and stuff for that game, because um, I think Metroid and Pokemon won't be just like you said for E3. They'll save that for E3. Yeah, I also I think Retro game Retro's new game is going to be at E3. Also, I still think that. Yeah, um, but so hold on. So will we get one in January? We'll get one hopefully in February for I, Indies, and then April. Like end of April or May. I think, I think major directs will probably get one. In I mean, we'll probably get one in January, but like, we'll probably get one at the end of March, early April for April, May, June games, and then E three will get one, and then probably like October, I think, and then we'll get little either game specific ones or mm-hmm. Nindy specific ones scattered throughout. Cause the Doom of Wolfenstein one was that that was in September, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of like how they have indie games having their own direct now, and then 3ds and uh, might have their own, or 3ds and Switch might get, get be combined together to have their own direct. I kind of like them like. You know, doing that uh, because given us like everybody gets hyped for any direct that Nintendo does, uh, they might not be hyped for when uh, a separate one comes out, like a Pokemon or a Breath of the Wild or you know the Animal Crossing. Like people might not get hyped about that, but Nintendo directs people still look forward to to watching. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. It, you know, whether it's disappoint, some people see it disappointing or not. People are tuning in to see what gets announced. Yeah, you know, and the people and people like the, when stuff like that gets announced. Yeah, I think I think in January, like what we're gonna be looking at is you know, Lost Sphere. Obviously, I think they're gonna feature prominently because that's probably their bigger January game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna get a title for the Yoshi game. We're gonna see Kirby Star Allies for sure. Uh, Wolfenstein Two, we're gonna see for sure. Fire Emblem, we'll get a title and gameplay for sure. Yes. Uh, but other than that, I we might see that rumored Donkey Kong game, just because like I think, you know, if they were to show it, it would be there, not at E three. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just feel like that that would be a decent place to show it, and then we would see platinum games show off some ports of Bayonetta two and oh. Wonderful One on One. That's what I want. And maybe maybe Okami HD for Switch. Yeah, that's like I'm still wondering like why isn't that why did that game not get announced for Switch? Like, I wonder if they're trying to still get it optimized and develop for it, like. Yeah. You know, because just think about it. You playing that, you playing it with both controllers in your hand. But when you get ready to draw uh, with the HD rumble and stuff, like you be able to do it like that. Like so, they're probably figuring it, figuring it out. Hopefully, because that game spells switch. Yeah. Like people are still willing to buy Okami HD now. Even if we don't get a Kami HD, I think we need to have a Kami too. I think Capcom needs to move on from a Kami HD and give us a two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or even throw us a bow. Give us DMC. I'll take DMC on Switch. Yeah. Yeah. I I wonder, man, because like I still feel like I feel like a bunch of Resident Evil ports are coming next year too. Yeah, especially of uh, one zero and four specifically. Uh, I, f- I I feel like all those are coming, and probably five and six as well, because you might as well just port those two. But like, I don't know. I feel like I I just feel like Capcom. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited for all the Mega Man stuff that they announced today, but like at the same time, it's like. They rely I feel too much like, on ports. I feel like they're kind of stuck a little bit and they're like trying to make up ground for money they've lost on the Street Fighter stuff and you know they're trying to gain back some goodwill for, for people and uh you know I, I still feel like they don't have anything big, new and exciting for like a quote unquote bigger audience to, to be excited about. And well it's the thing for to answer that question, Corey, is Monster Hunter World. They're putting everything into Monster Hunter. It makes my, the Monster Hunter series has made them too much money. Where Resident Evil used to be that, but it's not no more. I think once they got into five and six, that diminished uh, the value of Resident Evil. So, um, because Monster Hunter as a series ever since four came out has been making them money from both America and from Japan. I I just I feel like, you know, Monster Hunter making the money, they mm-hmm. maybe they haven't made like made as much money from Monster Hunter as Resident Evil, but they've made more of a profit because the development costs were low because they're developing for handhelds like yeah. for 3DS and now that they're putting the, they're putting a lot of faith in moving it to xbox one and ps4 and what if people just aren't interested in it you know like what if people aren't interested in a console version they're betting big they a lot of people i guess felt like you know capcom should put the series on console and the crazy thing that's going to be it's just like how is that you have to share PlayStation slash Xbox with the Nintendo fan base with this game. Because, A, 
Monster Hunter World is not going to do nothing in Japan on Xbox. Yeah. It might do something here in America. It's not going to do nothing in Japan. It may do something on PS4 in both territories. Mm-hmm. But here in America, people who are Nintendo fans and love the Monster Hunter series have to have either of those other systems. And they have to kind of show Sony that they want Monster Hunter on a console. Yeah. And I think, uh, and because of Double Cross only being available in Japan, they missed out on the market here in America where people were crying for it. People were just like, I'll buy Double Cross again on Switch if you bought it here because people bought Double Cross on 3DS. Yeah. So if you know they're putting in a lot of faith, they're definitely putting a lot of faith on PlayStation Four with the uh, with the exclusive console and you know and all of that stuff and probably the marketing. Uh, but you know they're really going to have to. Microsoft is really going to have to push this game here in America for Xbox One X. Sony don't really have to worry that much, but if they could, if if Microsoft could push this game here in America with One X, then Master Hunter would be, uh, would would be something for consoles that everybody would want. Microsoft has to push the Monster Hunter series, not Sony. Sony don't have to do nothing besides sit back and see if, who's going to buy it on their system and collect the money. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a big Monster Hunter guy. I know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That, a lot of my friends are Monster Hunter people. I feel like the last one that came out here didn't blow a lot of people away. Uh, you know, I still think a lot of people think four is kind of like the pinnacle of the series but at the same time you know they're they're doing a lot of quality of life things that i feel like people are into and you know as these other companies are moving into games as a service model like monster hunter fits into that model and i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes uh i'm I don't know. I I wish Capcom would would take some of these ideas and kind of expand them and and do new things. And like Resident Evil Seven was a good first step in that, but they got to keep going. That was the only like kind of new quote unquote new thing they put out this year, you know. And like everything else was and, a port or, uh, you know. Well, that and uh, well, Marvel Monster Capcom, Hunter Stories. I forgot it came out too this year, but. Yeah, and my son, the stories came out this year for 3DS. Yeah, I know. I'm. I mean, I'm talking about like bigger marketing push type titles, like oh, for bigger. Oh, yeah, like Resident Evil Seven, Marvel, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which didn't blow anybody out of the water. Like, I don't know, man. They, I, I think they need to try some things, and yeah, I don't know. We'll see something. We'll see something next year, I'm sure. But is, I, I think they just need to actually do small indie titles but and literally hey maybe you they maybe they have to hold off console let monster hunter world be the last big console give that updates and stuff but you know put your stuff on vita if you can put your stuff on 3ds and if you feel like doing mobile and gaming like do that like you could port stuff all you want to, but people want new experience. That's just showing if people are willing to buy these new experiences for Capcom, they're showing that, you know, hey, we love the old Capcom and we want to support the new Capcom, but you guys got to give us something fresh. And even if you give us something that's fresh on a smaller scale, let that build up your profits and then go back to being big on console. Yeah, because look at Square. I mean, look at Square Enix. Yeah. You know, ever, I think ever since they returned back to Nintendo, they've been making profit. And not to knock Rise of the Tomb Raider, and not to knock Tomb Raider or anything, but Bravely Default 
surpassed their expectations on how that game did. Yeah. And because of Project, I mean, not Project uh, Octopath, but because of Bravely uh, Default and even Bravely Default 2, they were making profit. Yeah. And now, and now look how people are looking at Square Enix as like, this is what you guys were about, where you guys were about Japanese RPGs. And we love that you are about Japanese RPGs. Everything else that you make to appeal to a Western audience, we're still going to support. We're still going to love. Yeah. But we know what you guys have been about, and that's what we want to come back to. Yeah. And, you know... Capcom doing sm- smaller titles like I, we're seeing Mega Man 11, so we'll see how that goes, and you know them kind of shifting focus to that way, and maybe this is the sign of a company who's going to explore. You know how everybody's been talking about exploring the the financial range of how much a game costs and how much you put into it, and like you budget something, and maybe you'll sell Mega Man 11 at. $30 and maybe you'll sell a ton of copies at $30 that you wouldn't sell at 50 or $60. So we'll right. see. I, I would love to see Capcom come back in a huge way. And they, they are starting to, you know, like I said earlier, Resident Evil seven was a big thing for them and, you know, still hasn't sold as many as Resident Evil four five or six, but they've, they've sold enough copies and that game had a lot of good word of mouth to it to the point where people are kind of interested in it again. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that's, uh, it, uh, last thing I say, uh, and I was thinking about this. If Capcom took back that, uh, no, if Disney took back that, uh, star Wars license, give it to Capcom. Capcom has made Disney a lot of money from the 8-bit and 16-bit days. Yeah, that's another collection I wanted to see on Switch 2 was that Disney Afternoon collection. Uh, oh, yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, maybe maybe we'll just have to do an episode on Thursday to uh, talk about <laughs> all this. Maybe, maybe we'll have yes. a bigger discussion because I know this was kind of a shorter episode because of time constraints and stuff. So, uh, But... This has been uh, another fun, interesting episode of uh, Nintendo Power Block. A lot of cool stuff announced today. I'm pretty excited for the Mega Man stuff. Yes. Um, Just to recap, Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2, Mega Man 11, and Mega Man X Collection are all coming to Nintendo Switch sometime in 2018. So, Yes. Excited for that. Uh, Remember, you can email us your questions at nintendopowblock at gmail.com or tweet at NGR Radio Podcast with the hashtag pow block for questions for pow block so or look for our facebook uh chains of of comments and stuff so uh ed where can we find you you guys can find me on twitter at that retro code and you can check out optional opinion on soundcloud and arsenal x here on ngr radio yeah you can find me yes. at cory hd on twitter twitch instagram all that good stuff uh you can also find me on ngr radio and Download our family of podcasts here at NGR Radio. It's a it's a good time. Yes, and everybody, December fifteenth will be NGR Radio's uh, buyer's guide, so you'll get awesome, cool Nintendo stuff if you want to check that out. Yeah. So it's coming out. Yes, yes. So thank you so much for watching or listening, and until next week or next time, maybe. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Woo-hoo! Ooh.